Hi, my name's Cathy Millett, and this week we're continuing culverts with a grill. So one of the big problems you have with culverts is you don't want stuff to get stuck inside them. And you don't want people or animals crawling through them either. So when they get to a certain size, it's normal to put a grill over the top and that grill just stops things going in and in some cases stops things coming out as well. Um, the grill that we're looking at at the moment I think is to stop kids crawling through rather than um, to stop branches or trees or logs because this is in a park. But sometimes culverts actually, they're quite large. This area here has got three culverts in a row and to stop any detritus logs going down they've basically put in a huge large culvert cover to make sure nothing gets down there. This is what we're going to do this week. It's a culvert grill. A little bit of water, a little debris coming down. Here's a culvert that I've got. Um, it's my woodland scenic one. If you want to know how I got this far, you can check out my previous videos. And I want to put a grill. And it's going to be about that sort of size. It's six foot HO scale, six foot um, square. And I went and dug out my styrene strip cabinet. That very fine one is point. 2, 0.02 inches or 0.5 of a millimetre and then the strip that I'm using is, I'll just put it here, it's 0.01 by 0.06 so it's 0.25 by 1.5 millimetres and you could easily make it out of a little bit thicker um, but I, I need to laminate it so it'll be fine. So once you've got your strip I measured out the sides. Now I'm going to have thin vertical rod and flat and narrow strip around the outside. So on the top and bottom I marked out six um, foot intervals um, in HO scale and I've got a HO scale ruler to help me do that. Once I'd finished marking I used a very fine 0.8 millimeter drill just with my fingers to cut through the styrene and then I used the rod to test that it would slide through easily. I cut the two strips out. Um, I'm going to trim them back later, which is very easy because this is very thin styrene strip. Because the styrene itself is so thin, I laminated it onto a second piece just to give a bit of rigidity. I used Plastic Magic by Lulux Materials. It's like water, so you only need a really small spot or you'll glue your styrene to its base rather than to itself. When they were dry, I cut them in half and separated the two strips. Using the small thin square section strip I cut out the uprights that are inside the grill section and to make them all the same I just put them next to each other against a ruler and cut them. Now if I was doing a lot I would actually use a northwest short line chopper which is excellent for cutting things like this. I couldn't be able to go and dig it out of the cupboard, but I do recommend getting one if you do this a lot. For ease of fitting these uprights into the top and bottom, I actually cut the bottom side all the way through and then I could slide that strip up and down on the grill rods to line them up easily. I slid each of these upright rods through the holes and made sure they moved easily. I then took the remaining outside of the grid and I put it against a metal weight. Um, I find that the glue doesn't stick as much to metal weights as it does to other things. And I used that against a square, lines that are drawn on a piece of foam board just to get everything lined up neatly. And it was then quite simple just to slide each one of those rods into the pockets created by the drilled strip and the laminated strip behind it. Um, once they were all in place I put a very small spot of glue on and again it was this plastic magic from deluxe materials and it just flows in very easily. So simple enough to sort. To ensure my grill set straight I used the metal weights and I used the lines I'd drawn onto a piece of foam board and I made sure that I straightened everything up so it wasn't skewed. Put the weight on the other side, kept it in place and let it set solid. Right, it's just been setting for an hour or two and I'm just going to ease up, whilst holding here, this plastic to the other end. So I'm just going to put a taddish amount of glue on 
Again, very small. I don't want to stick it to anything, but I shouldn't. So a little bit to run through each of these holes. So I'm checking that these line up and that they're straight on my lines that are on here. Excellent. Right, leave that a minute. Whilst my main grill was setting up, I cut out some short bits, which are legs and feet, to attach the grill to the concrete. It sits a little bit out from it and um, has just this little twisted bolt onto the wall. I simplified it a little bit so I could create it in styrene. It was a little bit tricky to glue these into the right angle shape that they need to be. I used a metal weight again and I rested them against it upright and used a small, and I mean a small amount of glue. If you put too much on the styrene, it just sticks to your foam core, which really doesn't work. Okay, now I need to cut this one to size because I need to add the square outer edges. Um, it's got the tube in the middle and square on the outside. So what I'm going to do is measure and just draw myself a little sign. So I'm going to do a foot in HO scale. What I'm going to do is um, cut them a little bit large and then trim them to size, which is often the easiest way when you're doing some delicate stuff like this. Trying to line everything up can be a nightmare. my weights to make sure that the side stayed vertical and upright and firm against the styrene um, that it was joining up to, I put a little spot of glue on, I put each of the two strips on, then I put a, the second two strips on, laminated and left them until they were nice and solid. Well, I'm just sneaking in five minutes modelling before I go off to my sister's birthday party. So here we go, a quick one on the grill so I can get it spray painted to do it properly later. It's set up, um, yeah, it's not too delicate. I'm just gonna take a, an enamory board to the section where I had the um, little pipe, um, the little strips sticking out the top, so it's nice and flat. It's gonna be underneath, so when it's on the model you won't see it. So there we go, that'll do. And then I just need to trim these all flush, so. Next off, I just emery boarded the corners to make sure everything was neat and tidy. There we go. So that's my grill. And these are my little legs. So I'm just going to stick these on like this so they stick out and stick them behind. So it's just slightly proud. Now, I just want to work out how to glue these. I'm doing one here so it doesn't stick because I find it sticks to the green. And I think we'll just have to do them by eye. So I'm, I'm then going to go away and spray it with black car paint primer. Very simple to use, I just buy Halfords, but anything that's a black primer you could use a Tamiya. Um, I use black just because it covers the white totally, um, gives a bit of um, shadow effect to it when you come to paint it. So I'll go and spray that and then leave it to dry and then tomorrow I'll come back and paint it. So my grill's back, it's painted, um, and there we go. So it just needs to look a little bit more grey now, because let's face it, it's galvanised. And how do we make a galvanised um, effect? I like to use a little bit of a thin, I have the black underneath, and I have a little bit of a dark grey, which, which could have been shaken a bit better, and I have a little bit of a, a white, just to make it a bit lighter that much. And I have it quite, if I'm going to be honest, quite um, quite damp. And this is just hmm, the brush that seems to get used for everything. Um, and I'm just going to literally just splodge it on. So then what I do is I just add a little bit of white to it to get a slightly lighter colour. Well, my grill's dried a lot darker than I wanted it to, if I'm honest. So I'm just going to put a little bit more white onto there. So this is the culvert section of the, goes behind the grill. 
And what I need to do is just prepare all this ready for the grill because I don't want to be knocking my grill, which is, it's, you know, it's not delicate, but easy enough to knock off if you're not careful. So I'm going to do the water section down to here. So what does that involve? I'm going to get my dark mig wash. All I want to do is just make the section where the water's going to go a little bit darker um, down here. So I know that my water's going to sit here. I'm just going to put this along and I'm going to make it just in the bottom there a little bit darker. In the sections at the bottom where the um, water would accumulate. Well, it's dried, but it's left this kind of ring. And normally what you do is you would take a, um, just a, a normal MIG wash type of, that they have a MIG wash thinner, and you'd use it and you just use it to spread it out. But I thought I would actually put a bit of green in here because if I look at my photos, there's a lot of green on some of these and I think that's rather lacking on any of my models so far. So I've got this, um, another MIG wash, and this one's moss. So I'm just gonna put in a little bit of green which you can just use to, to fade out this edge. And because they're enamels, they'll redissolve very easily with just a little bit of a um, friction from a, a paintbrush. Okay, so my grill's dry. My um, enamels, they don't smell quite dry, but I think they're normally nearly there. And now I just need to put this on here. And you can see it's quite a snug fit. Just measured that right, didn't I? And um, I just need to get it on there. I don't want it quite on the bottom there. And I'm gonna glue it on with good old fashioned super glue. So I'm just gonna get a um, business card, my super glue and a cocktail stick. So a small little blob on each of these. I don't want too much because it will just show. And the trick with this is you do not want it to move because you'll end up with shine. So you want it to go in exactly where you want it to go. There we go. Okay. Does that look, there is a bit of shine. Now, oops, I find with a bit of super glue, you can just take it off with the knife. There is a bit of shine on there because I moved it. Next one. Can't see anything else. So there we are. I've got my grill in place. Now, you can see, immediate problem, how do you do the water with the grill there? I'm actually gonna use a cocktail stick to get it inside the grill because it's narrower. And it's gonna rush through my, my grill and down. So I'm just poking it down. I didn't wanna put it on before the um, grill went on, but actually with hindsight, I probably should have done the tunnel sort of section first. But here we go, it's gonna come through and around. And what I'm gonna do is because it's um, blobbed slightly onto the grill, I'm just gonna take this and just wipe it down. So it comes down, there we go. I had the epoxy resin out for something else, so I just thought I'd put a couple of drips in to here to just fill up this little gap. Um, if you want to know how to mix epoxy resin, then it's, I've done a video on it and you can check here and come back when you've read that or listened to that. So I'm just putting a little, a few drips in and you know, I'm, I've mixed all this because I've got other plans for it. Um, and I'll probably put a little stream along here, but not a huge amount. It's actually a hole there, so there we go. And then I'm just going to, um, blow on it to get rid of the bubbles. There we go. And that will hopefully stay in there. If it doesn't, you may notice that it's on this newspaper for a reason. It'll just flow over the edge and drip. And frankly, that doesn't really bother me. I've got used to a lot of dripping resin over my watery life. So there we go. So continuing with my grill. Fascinatingly, it's actually displaced the, um, um, resin has displaced some of the colour underneath and this is set now. So I'm going to go over it with some acrylic gloss medium, which is over here, and just put a little bit of texture on. I'm, it's a dribble and what I haven't got yet is the dribble coming out of the pipe correctly. It needs just a little bit more in there. So let's see if we can just get that in. I think it 
just a bit more of a gush coming through. So, my grill's annoying me. It's just a little bit the wrong colour. So when in doubt, I reach for MIG wash. Just to add a little bit of a, perhaps a different slight texture, might put a bit of a slight gloss, not a gloss, but a, a feeling of just, it's not completely chalky matte. And this is neutral, so it's not gonna do a huge amount. I haven't shaken it particularly hard either. And I'm just, especially on this top bit where I think, you know, it could do with just being toned down a bit. There we go, down the side here. And yes, I am running it into wet, but hey, I like to. So I'm just literally putting this on here. And the other thing whilst I'm um, doing this is to think about just the, um, the kind of detritus that would be built up. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking leaves. I'm missing some leaves. So my go-to ingredient when I want to do leaves a chamomile tea. Now this is, that's normal tea. Normal tea can be a bit dark, but chamomile tea, I love. I think it's wonderful. I think it just captures the look of um, fallen leaves really nicely. So let me just, um, just sprinkle. There was a few sort of caught up in the, the water almost in the um, picture that I had. So I'm just gonna put them in there. And to get those to stick, there's the good old fashioned um, slight spray of isopropyl and a drip of glue. Which will also make a nice cup of tea if you want, I guess. So I'll also um, just run that into the corner there and into this corner. And what I'm gonna do um, is just sprinkle a few into the edge where it might just have caught without being washed away. Not many, and I want them to get a bit damp and look a bit sort of stuck in there. So I'm around this side. And actually, I've probably got too much glue on here, so let's just um, do the old fashioned thing of tipping it off. It's a quick recap on what we did this week. First of all, we made a culvert out of styrene. Secondly, we um, painted it and we installed it in place on this existing um, grassy culvert diorama. And we put a little bit of gloss medium on and then a little bit of epoxy resin just to put the, um, the depth into the water. And finally, we glued in place a few items of um, sort of debris, which is caramel tea leaves, just to make it look really good. This week, it's Nenscale Kathy's turn to go through the culvert. Yeah, culvert. These are new. Last time I saw these, they were just on the kitchen workbench, but it really looks like she's put them on the layout. Oh, it was a real faff getting up here, you know. You have to get up the wooden ladder. Oh, just yeah. So anyway. At least I can fit in it. Some of the others, I'm not sure where mill scale Kathy's hips would go through. Woo! Not sure about that at all. But I might have a little wonder and just check out the other side. But first, isn't that nifty modelling? Don't they look good? Let's go see what's through here. I hear she's been slacking a bit. Look! Yeah. Does look good. I can almost hear the foghorn from the port. Well, actually, it's not foggy, so that might be my imagination. Oh, isn't this good? 
Oh, I do like this. I just, I wonder how I get back. Any ideas? Is another mini Kathy stuck on the other side of the culverts? Will we ever see them again? Will they ever get into mayhem and madness in the videos? Or is this the end? I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. If you have, then subscribe to me. Or like me on Facebook, Kathy Millett Modelling. Alternatively, on my website, kathymillett.co.uk. See you next week.